If I were the Prince of Darkness, I'd want to engulf the whole world in darkness. But as I said, I've certainly haven't been involved, and I warn all of you, never, never, never. You will not only lose your mind, you lose yourself. A 165-pound manuscript, a thousand-year-old legend, and Google just pointed its most advanced quantum computing system at it. The Devil's Bible has been digitally cracked. What they found is horrifying. What if a medieval monk encoded a warning to the future in a book written with one hand? And what if that warning is finally being read? Not by man, but by machine. Google's quantum core did what centuries of human scholars couldn't. It found patterns hidden in the Devil's Bible that nobody expected to discover. By sifting through the manuscript's 310 pages using advanced cryptographic algorithms, the quantum system detected something shocking. A buried Latin phrase constructed from every 177th character throughout the text. When these scattered letters were assembled, they spelled out Exurgent Umbre et Redebunt Perditi. The shadows will rise and the lost will return. This ominous message appears nowhere in the visible text, yet was methodically distributed throughout the manuscript. The AI-assisted analysis didn't stop there. It revealed elaborate acrostics hidden within sections of spells and incantations. The first letters of consecutive lines in one section spelled out Respis Finem, Omnia Mundi Vanitas. Consider the end, all the world's vanity. A grim warning embedded letter by letter down a page of magic formulas. Perhaps most startling were the fractal patterns discovered in the artwork's symmetry. The quantum system identified mathematical rhythms in the manuscript's layout, major divisions occurring at page counts corresponding to astronomical cycles, multiples of 28 and 30, significant in lunar months. These aren't random coincidences, but suggest intentional cosmological alignments encoded into the very structure of the book. The AI also detected something extraordinary in the decorative elements. When the ornate capital letters and marginal illustrations from different pages were digitally overlaid, they formed continuous geometric patterns, pieces of a visual puzzle scattered throughout the manuscript. Some resembled the Kabbalistic Tree of Life, while others formed near-perfect pentagrams, symbols that would have been considered dangerous in medieval Christianity. But that was only the beginning. What the quantum core found next goes beyond language. It might redefine how we view the book entirely. New analysis suggests the Devil's Bible might be more than just a book. It could be what researchers are now calling a spiritual operating system. The quantum scan revealed structural elements that function like components of software rather than merely text on a page. Think of it this way. The spells function as commands, executable instructions meant to trigger specific outcomes. The biblical scripture serves as system files, the stable core providing the framework. The illustrations, especially the devil's portrait, operate as a visual interface, a graphic processor for the system. And the encoded prophecies work like system logs, recording events across time. The patterns within the codex aren't random. They follow a precise cosmological numerology. Major divisions in the book occur at page counts that correspond exactly to lunar cycles, with multiples of 28 and 30 appearing consistently throughout the structure. This suggests the book was designed to synchronize with astronomical events like solar eclipses and planetary conjunctions. Look, this isn't just about hidden text. What we're seeing is structure, like someone designed this as a multi-layered machine, not to be read, but to be run. If you're fascinated by how ancient knowledge and cutting-edge tech are colliding, give this video a like and hit subscribe. This rabbit hole only goes deeper. The quantum analysis went beyond just examining the text. It enabled forensic investigations that would have been impossible with traditional methods. Scientists conducted a quantum-enhanced DNA scan of the manuscript's parchment, revealing something that defies historical explanation. All 620 pages were sourced from the same genetic line of animal. In the 1200s, this would have been nearly impossible. Creating a book this size typically required dozens of different animals, 
yet the DNA markers consistently match across the entire manuscript. This raises a disturbing theory. Were these animals specifically bred for a sacrificial purpose? Did the monk maintain a dedicated herd for years just to create this book? Even more unsettling are the trace elements found in the inks. The quantum analysis detected iron and hemoglobin compounds in specific sections, signatures consistent with blood-based ink. While iron gall ink was common in medieval times, the particular composition found in the Codex matches Eastern alchemical mixtures that shouldn't have been available in Bohemia at that time. Perhaps most significant is the correlation with other mysterious manuscripts. When researchers cross-reference the patterns found in the Devil's Bible with the infamous Voynich Manuscript, another undeciphered text, they discovered matching symbols and structural similarities. This suggests both manuscripts may be part of a pan-European esoteric network, different nodes in a system of encoded knowledge spanning across medieval Europe. And the scariest part, this could mean the Devil's Bible isn't unique at all. It might be part of a greater hidden archive, with more still to uncover. Since Google's quantum findings became known in scientific circles, multiple sources have indicated that both the Vatican's secret archives, Division and DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, have quietly requested access to the full Quantum Codex dataset. Why would these powerful institutions suddenly take interest in an old medieval manuscript? The concern appears to center around what the pattern analysis revealed potential predictive models encoded within the text and illustrations, possibly tied to catastrophic historical cycles. Researchers have identified references in the hidden text that seem to align with major historical disasters. Certain encoded sequences correspond with dates of the Black Death, the Great Stockholm Castle Fire, where the book was nearly destroyed, and periods of significant political upheaval. The quantum analysis found these weren't random correlations, but statistically significant patterns embedded throughout the manuscript. What's particularly concerning to some scholars is how this information could be weaponized in today's world of big data and psychological operations. If the Codex contains models for influencing mass psychology or simulating belief systems, as some researchers now suspect, this information in the wrong hands could have serious implications. You have to ask, why would the Vatican, or a defense agency, care about a book full of ancient spells, unless they believe there's something in there still active? One of the most tantalizing mysteries of the Devil's Bible has always been its missing pages, Twelve leaves that were deliberately sliced out with a blade, not torn or lost by accident. For centuries, scholars believed these missing sections contained the Rule of St. Benedict, based on a 13th century note in the Codex itself. But the quantum scan has revealed something far more intriguing hiding in plain sight. Using multispectral imaging, Google's quantum system analyzed the binding and edges around the cut leaves, looking for impressions, ink smudges, or imprints left on adjacent pages. What they found challenges the conventional explanation completely. The AI-enhanced imaging uncovered faint indentations and in mirror writing, pressure ghosts created when the scribe's pen pressed through to adjacent pages. These ghost texts contain fragments of Latin words, including experimento, suggesting experiments or experiences rather than monastic rules. Even more compelling were the star-shaped symbols detected in these ghost impressions, resembling astrological gates or celestial configurations. When the scattered fragments were digitally assembled, they revealed a pattern that several scholars have interpreted as potentially describing the structure of a portal or summoning ritual. What do you think was removed from the Devil's Bible? A forgotten prophecy? A ritual to unlock something darker? Let us know in the comments below. The most iconic feature of the Devil's Bible has always been its massive full-page portrait of Satan on folio 290 Aguar but the quantum analysis has revealed disturbing details about this illustration that go far beyond its visual impact. The pigment analysis detected high concentrations of arsenic and cinnabar in the devil's image, 
both toxic substances that were used for their vibrant colors, but also had occult significance in medieval alchemy. The devil literally contains poison in his makeup. What's equally striking is what's not there, the vast empty space surrounding the devil. Unlike typical medieval illustrations that fill every available inch with detail, this portrait is isolated in a sea of blank parchment. The quantum scan suggests this wasn't an artistic choice, but a deliberate design, possibly functioning as what some scholars now call a containment field or portal sigil. Throughout history, there have been accounts of people having strange reactions to viewing the devil's portrait. When the Codex was publicly displayed in the 19th century, there were reports of viewers fainting or experiencing overwhelming dread after staring into the devil's eyes. These accounts were dismissed as superstition, but the quantum analysis shows there's something uniquely unsettling in its composition. Several occult historians now propose that the devil's image isn't merely an illustration, but an invitation, a doorway rather than a picture. The blank space around it would serve as the threshold. This isn't your average medieval devil doodle. It's 20 inches tall. It stares straight at you. And some historians now believe it might have been a spiritual seal or a trap. After all the speculation, the quantum analysis has confirmed what many have long suspected. The Codex Gigas was indeed created by a single person. The scribe's identity appears in the manuscript itself. Hermanus Inclusus, Herman the Enclosed or Reclusive, suggesting he was either a voluntary hermit or possibly imprisoned during the book's creation. The quantum scan verified the extraordinary uniformity of the handwriting throughout all 620 pages. There are no breaks in style, no variations in technique that would indicate multiple writers or even significant pauses in the work. This means one man dedicated approximately 20 to 30 years of continuous effort to create this manuscript, a lifetime achievement that borders on the physically impossible. The book's journey through history has been marked by disaster. Fires, deaths, and obsessions have followed the Codex from Bohemia to Sweden. It survived the devastating castle fire of 1697 when it was thrown from a four-story window, reportedly striking and injuring a bystander below. The original monastery where it was created was later destroyed during the Hussite Wars. Emperor Rudolf II, who acquired the book, eventually descended into paranoia and was deposed. Even today, staff at Sweden's National Library report strange experiences. Some refuse to be alone with the manuscript after hours, and scholars who study it for extended periods often report recurring nightmares or an oppressive feeling while working with it. While the quantum scan didn't detect literal demons bound to the pages, no surprise there, it did reveal just how deeply this book was engineered. The layered codes, mathematical structure, and embedded messages show a level of complexity that goes far beyond normal medieval manuscript creation. The Codex Gigas may not be a demonic relic in the supernatural sense, but it is, undeniably, a weaponized book of knowledge, meticulously constructed, symbolically loaded, and spiritually charged. It's a device designed with purpose, not merely a text to be read. The quantum tools haven't ended the mystery of the Devil's Bible. They've only shown how deep it goes, revealing layers of intention that have remained hidden for almost 800 years. We always thought the Codex Gigas was a warning from the past. But what if it was meant for the future? For us? And now, we finally have the tools to understand it. Subscribe if you're drawn to ancient secrets, high technology, and the strange intersection between them. We have more to reveal in the next chapter.